In studio, Daniel Bennett from Homeowner's Voice. Daniel, good morning to you once again. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Dan. You brought mm-hmm. some uh, some props with you? Right? Yeah. What do you got? Homeowners have a voice. Advocate for homeowners. Laws to protect home values. A voice in planning our committees. That sounds like an HOA to me. Uh, sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. We represent all homeowners, whether they are or not. Mm-hmm. But actually... Uh, planning a voice in planning our communities actually has to do with one of our uh, signature uh, goals not of this session but of next session maybe of changing the uh, County Planning Commission rules to make sure that homeowners are included as on the on the Planning Commission as a representative right now they have to have business industry labor and farming but they don't there's no provision in the code for homeowners, and we think that should be added. So it's that's. But don't those people own homes? Well, they in the in the in the code it says must fairly represent, mm-hmm. and so the question is, do they represent? And that's a good question. And maybe just any homeowner would be considered fairly representing it. But we want to make sure it's clear in the code that they should be fairly represented. Very good. Now, you are following a specific House bill this term. Yes, that's correct. Tell me about this. Well, um, there was a legislation introduced by Chairman Howell called HB 3558, and that's the easier title than the actual uh, title to it. But uh, it essentially allows developers and HOAs to opt out of being in an HOA. So if a developer wants to avoid being under the regulation under what's called 36B in the West Virginia Code, they would have that option, or as a uh, HOA, you could opt out as well. So that was introduced. Um, the HOA system is broken here in West Virginia. Um, we would like to make sure any legislation, whether it's uh, Chairman Howell's or anybody else's, includes some provisions. And so, do you we, want? Are you in favor of people having the freedom to opt out of a, a homeowners association or not? Of, of course, if, if they have, and we we specify that if there's a majority vote, they should be able to opt out. Opt out. So before you go further on that, let me mm-hmm. ask you this question about homeowners associations, developers, developments. Mm-hmm. Does does any developer who wants to throw up a hundred or two hundred or three hundred houses in a place also have to then by law establish a homeowners association for that development? There are certain counties that uh, where that often happens, uh, but it. It isn't throughout the entire state, so it does happen that uh, quite often it is very good for the county to not have to, and the state to not have to take care of these what will be private roads, and and sometimes sewage and and, mm-hmm. and sometimes other things. So having an HOA is a way to allow that community to take care of it, as I may have mentioned a few times here. Sidewalks. There. Uh, there the width of the road, that there's no traffic enforcement, and those types of things are a problem. So mm-hmm. one way to solve it would be if uh, you're stuck in a dysfunctional rogue or zombie HOA uh, to be able to have a simple majority say, well, no, we, we don't have a functioning quasi-municipality. You know, we don't have a real town, and nobody's really minding the store. We're taking care of it. So there are a lot of communities like that throughout uh, the counties that have HOAs, right. and it's a problem. Good, Bill. Yeah. In West, in uh, Berkeley County and Jefferson County, uh, if a developer is doing this euphemistic 2,500 uh, uh, subdivision, mm-hmm. uh, are they required to institute an HOA? I believe the county has them do that. But, I, that's my understanding as well. Yeah. But they're required that they have no option. Now the op opting out would be somewhere down downstream. No, no. This would change the law. This under HB thirty five fifty eight, they would be able to opt out. So the developer would be able to opt out. But, so there would yeah. never be an HOA uh, instituted at all. They could opt in. Okay. Or they could yeah. Opt out. Okay. Yeah maybe play on words right now the uh in, in berkeley county mm-hmm. the developer has to develop or institute an hoa if they're in the unincorporated areas i believe that's yeah. the case okay so so this bill would say they can opt out or they would never have to institute an hoa 
or form an agency. That's that is when we talked with uh, one of the co-sponsors. Okay. What they indicated okay, to fine. us. Yeah. And what would be the advantage to the subsequent uh, members of that lives in that subdivision of not having an HOA? I can see an advantage for the developer, but what would be the advantage of the homeowner? Well, the advantage for the homeowner is that they will be freed from taking care of it as a community. And some people want to be in a planned community, and they want to have the rules of the road for all of the people who sign their covenant to paint their houses certain colors, to do that type of stuff. Or some people just want to live in a community where the state comes in and plows and fixes their roads and, and does those types of things. So there could be a, a variety of people who want different things, and they'll pick which one they want. Okay, so uh, going to staying with roads, if there is not a homeowners association, yep. does that mean the state maintains the roads? I assume so. I don't think so. Well, if there are not private roads, if there's no common area interest, then someone has to take care of those roads. Under HARP, which is no longer the, the in law, that took care of these orphan roads. But there, are, right now, there is zombie and rogue HOAs who are not taking care of their roads right now, and they just go into disrepair. And eventually, the state has to take them over. So the question is, do you wait until there's your you don't have plowed roads and your your streets are falling apart before the state then can come in or do you say from the beginning you know we don't have enough people we're not interested in doing that type of stuff the roads that are made are essentially turned over to the state immediately yeah i i'm not been with this recently mm -hmm. uh, but it was my understanding that the state does not have to assume the responsibility for a road even if the roads fall in disrepair with an HOA yeah. I don't think the state is obligated to go in and start repairing the roads but you're saying they are um, they don't have to but eventually you can't get you know fire trucks and ambulances down there and uh, once they get abandoned Quite often they do pick them up through the Harp Road. There was a very settled way to do it. Right now it's just depending on how bad it gets before the state steps in. I think we should make sure that homeowners have a say. There are lots of places where they don't have these planned communities, and they function, and they live, and they have wonderful neighborhoods. It's a decision to have a planned community where the homeowners association forms almost like a municipality and provides those services but there are lots of places where they're not doing that and that's what we want addressed okay i i'm sorry dan i'm i've lost the bubble on this altogether uh and uh, uh so you are advocating that the individuals can drop out of a homeowner association if they choose to yes at the beginning of the at the planned stage of creating the development daniel or are you talking about while the development's already underway and they've been living there 10 years we are we are mainly talking about when they are living there and the hoa no longer functions properly so that is but, where we think that they should be the homeowners if there is a zombie hoa we have three board members mm -hmm. each of us have a situation where we have a dysfunctional HOA, one where it's rogue, meaning they're doing things that are probably not in the fiduciary interest of their community, and then a third where we don't even know if the declarant ever gave over control to a formally to an HOA because it's not in the county records. So there are some communities that are working just fine. They like them, and they should be allowed to do them, but for those communities which don't have functional HOAs, there's a way for them to come back into functionality, but there isn't a lot of help or oversight from the state to do it, and they should be allowed to leave if they want to. Well, yeah, again, I, I'm, I think we're talking about two different things. Uh, an HOA functions best when all the homeowners uh, contribute right. uh, financially and everything in every other way. But then when a homeowner decides not to contribute, that's putting more of a burden on the other 
homeowners. So that's when you start this slippery slope of an HOA not being functional. Now, I understand all that, but let's go to the bottom line. Yep. Let's go to the point that where HOA is no longer functional. Yep. And you're saying the state will come in and maintain the roads. I don't think that's the case. I think if you have a bunch of homeowners that have moved away, excuse me, moved out of the HOA but right. still live there, the roads continue to uh, deteriorate. That's right. But that's going to be on their burden. That's going to be on the homeowner association that opt not to maintain an HOA, but they're not going to be bailed out by the state. Right. Right now, um, it, the states step in when they feel that's necessary to do it, when sometimes going, after yeah. 20 years. But let me point out one thing that's we want to make sure that's included in the legislation, which is right now when a an HOA isn't functioning properly, mm-hmm. it's rogue or it's a zombie one, there is no oversight. You can go to the attorney general's office and say there's fraud, there is improper uh, things, they're not registering with the Secretary of State, they're not doing the things they're supposed to do as an HOA. They're, the only thing you can do right now, because there's no oversight by the Attorney General or anybody else, is to do lawsuits which can cost tens of thousands of dollars for the homeowner trying to sue their HOA board into being or to get the process started. Um, it can be very difficult, and now that many HOAs are in disrepair, there's no way for the state to actually help make sure that those communities are operating properly, and individual homeowners have no way to figure out what to do currently. So we need something to fix this. So what does 3558 do? It's a a sledgehammer, and we want to make sure that if anything gets passed, it includes some other provisions. And we've listed them here, making sure that the attorney general can come in for bad HOAs and clean up the mess for the zombie and rogue HOAs. We want to be able to provide the escape hatch for HOAs where it's been 10, 15, 20 years and the HOA is not functioning properly to get out of it. And we want to be able to make sure that in those types of situations that there's a clear and understandable path. For example, uh, bring back something like HARP or something where there can be a understandable path toward not being a planned community. So a lot of this, all of these come back to the uh, more uh, more increased participation by the state. Or that, the yes, in terms of oversight definitely because if you have a rogue hoa that isn't doing what they're supposed to do and you're an individual homeowner or a group of homeowners you have little right now you can do besides going to an attorney and suing at the tune of tens of thousands of dollars with the hope that maybe you'll recover legal fees at the end of that process maybe daniel you mentioned that there are three of you involved in this who are right now in the middle of a situation with your hoa's Right. which are, I think you call them rogue HOAs or zombie HOAs at one point yep. along the way. Mm-hmm. Are uh, any of the three of you on the board of your HOAs? Um, one of us was the head of it for a while. Um, they're no longer on on it officially, but they had previously been the president of it. Okay, and were there remedies sought within the HOA first before you thought there was a need to craft legislation to solve the problem? Yes. And where did that lead you? Nowhere? Essentially, is that what you're telling me? Worse than nowhere. In the case of the zombie one, where... And define what a zombie HOA is. um, That is where nobody knows where the HOA is. There's no functioning HOA. And when you go to the covenant and you look at it, it says the declarant has to turn it over, and then you go to the county clerk's office, which we did, can't find when it ever happened. And the declarant is the builder. And the declarant is the builder. Okay. And they are supposed to turn that over officially at, say, 50% Mm -hmm. of the homes being bought and purchased and signed covenants. We don't know. We still don't know a year later who controls that neighborhood. How old is the neighborhood at this point? um, It was set up in the 90s. 
and the HOA sort of disappeared in the early 2000s. There was a, there was a functioning board at one point, and then it disappeared? They appeared to function, but we don't know under what legal uh, standard they were using because we can't find when the declarant turned it over to them. Do the residents pay an HOA fee? They did for a while, even past when HARP took over it. So they actually went through the HARP process, and they had we, we've we uh, FOIA'd and received the actual petition back when we had the HARP road program where you, you could turn your uh, roads over to the, the state. But it's still not clear if the HOA could exist now. And under state law at this time, in regards to what those residents use for services, Mm -hmm. trash, snow removal, garbage collection, bulk uh, collections, whatever, Mm -hmm. how are they functioning? Are they currently contracting on their own individually to have these services taken care of? Funny you should ask that. Um, In the case of the roads being plowed and fixed, that's under the state, and the state does that. In terms of garbage pickup, which is one of the other issues that we're uh, talking about to homeowners, the Public Service Commission oversees that. And you should be able to have a contract with any of the uh, trash services to have it picked up. They have to comply with the rules set out by the Public Service Commission. You have to, and you as a homeowner, have to have your trash picked up or take care of it once every 30 days at least and your trash service should make sure that they pick it up and if you they don't pick <clears throat> pick it up within 5 days they're supposed to alert the public service commission so they can work out alternative arrangements so that's something we want to make sure that people know that they can go to the to us or directly to the public service commission if they're having trouble with their trash service and who cares for the common areas in these communities at the moment um There are no common areas now that the roads are gone. In the case of one, in the case of the other, it's in litigation. And what is the state's oversight of these HOAs right now in West Virginia? Essentially zero, as as far as we can tell. It's essentially every person for their own, and they have to go hire lawyers. So with these HOAs in the past, they've collected money from individuals with the understanding that services would be provided. Yes. What's happened to that money? In, in some cases, it, it goes toward the functioning of it. In the case of uh, the zombie one, they stopped collecting it, so it's not much of an issue, and the roads are being maintained by the state. Is there any criminal wrongdoing that's taken place in any of these situations? We have not uncovered anything criminal. Obviously, that would be turned over to the appropriate authorities, but there's a lot of civil infractions which we're concerned about, and that's where it ends up being stuck in costly legal trial, uh, legal um, In the suits. case of HB 3558 and what you hope to accomplish with it, would it give the individual within a collective community that doesn't care to withdraw from the HOA, would it give the individual the opportunity or right to withdraw from the HOA? While my next door neighbor, for instance, is still part of it. No, I. we want amendments to anything that passes, whether it's HB 3558 or anything else, but I do not believe there's any circumstance where individuals can do it. It would either be a majority vote if we got our way, or it always has to be something where there, it's all or nothing. The entire neighborhood withdraws or everybody remains? I believe so. All right. Bill, from a commission standpoint, having served as council uh, president or commission president, uh, what's the county option in a situation like this where you've got a community that's been abandoned and now we're looking for services? There was a lot of complaints. A lot of folks come in and said the developer did not do what they were supposed to do, especially those uh, developments that bordered Jefferson County and Berkeley County on both because the county is treating them somewhat differently. Uh, Berkeley County, if memory serves, was a little more uh, involved than what Jefferson County was. Uh, but there was a lot of uh, questions to the county. Are you going to take over my road? The developer uh, abandoned us. In some cases, the all the development uh, developer built one or two houses, then they walked away. This was back in the late uh 2008 2009 when a lot of developers lost money. So they 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 abandoned 
the development after one or two homes. That's a little bit different issue than what you said. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the county's responsibility at that time was only to help help the uh, uh, the one or two homeowners in pursuing legal action against the developer. Uh, the county did not ever, as far as I know, assumed responsibility of the roads. Can the county prevent the developer from opening up a new development? Uh, yes, they can. Until they satisfy yes, the they can. The exactly one? right, yeah. They, we do not have that situation because the developers that uh, run out of money left the business yeah. uh, so but they we did have a few homeowners high and dry and uh, trying to find out a uh, a way to resolve that but it's done through the planning commission and that was the only uh leverage the planning commission had was looking forward as opposed to stepping in and correcting them uh, a problem daniel we're almost out of time but real quick who's your lead sponsor on this bill um it's not our bill we're we're aware of the bill, and we want we've talked with uh, some of the co-sponsors HB thirty five fifty eight by Chairman Howell. Chairman Howell, and we just want to make sure if anything passes, it includes some provisions to protect homeowners.